Hey there guys, welcome back to Good Works Tractors. I have my son Owen behind the camera again today. So we are gonna be doing a snow plow versus snow blower comparison today. It's one of the things I've been asked about a lot and uh, I recently did, if you haven't checked it out yet, a comparison on a bucket versus a snow pusher. So gonna be the same. You're gonna have pros and cons of a snow plow and also a snow blower. Okay, we'll go through what the pros and cons are here of the snow plow and same thing for the snow blower. What we're gonna do is regulate this and, and, and uh, pair it down to just subcompact and compact tractors. You know, there are loader mounted snow plows. I've done a, a video on one of those recently that mount on the end of your uh, loader arms, just like a snow pusher would do, or pallet forks or your bucket, that kind of thing. But for this comparison here, to try to get it apples to apples, we're going to stick with frame mounted snow plow, frame mounted snow blower. If you haven't done so yet, please take a moment, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, check out my other videos, and here we go. All right, so first let's go over the pros of the snow plow itself, all right? And so uh, one of the main things is that it, what a snow plow is good for is going to be similar to a snow pusher, okay? It's good for small amounts of snow, large amounts of snow, that powdery stuff, kind of like what you see here, or the really wet, heavy stuff. It can kind of handle it all, and it doesn't really matter how deep it is. Sure, if you get a 30-inch snowfall, you're going to struggle with it, but the same thing can be said with a snow blower or with any other implement, okay? Next up is going to be cost. You know, you can typically get a snow plow for much cheaper than what you're going to get a snow blower. I mean, a brand new snow plow here is going to be 15, 1700 bucks like this. A snow blower like that, a 54 inch, you're looking at 42, 4400 bucks. And so there's a significant cost difference there uh, to consider. And that's why a lot of folks end up going with a snow plow. So another great benefit or a pro of a snow plow is the fact that there's really not that many moving parts. You got a couple of springs here. You've got two cylinders, one here and then one down below. Okay, so you got a couple pieces here and some hoses, that kind of thing. But overall, there's not a whole lot going on. Your, uh, your shoes right here and your plow blade down there, the replaceable blade, those are replaceable parts. So you can easily take those off and, and replace them. These springs, you really don't have to do anything with. And uh, on the cylinders themselves, most likely what's gonna happen maybe over 15, 20, 25 years is you might get some corrosion here that you need to replace these fittings here at the end of the hoses or you could have some, some sheathing here that cracks. And so overall, there's less moving parts on a snow plow compared to a snow blower and therefore less maintenance. So one of the other benefits of a snow plow is that you can sort of use it as a back drag. And so you can see right here where we're at close to a building. I can't really push snow that way. You know, I can push snow this way, but I'm gonna have a, a stop down there as well. And so with a snow plow, kind of like the back drags and the snow pushers, you can get up here and you can pull it away. Yeah, you're going to have a lot of spillage on the sides as you're backing up, but you can't do that at all with a snow blower. So one of the biggest drawbacks of a snow plow is you're going to end up with big piles somewhere, you know, and me at, at my house, I've got several areas I can really push the snow. And if I'm thinking about it ahead of time, I can push that snow way back and give myself plenty of room over the winter to, to let the snow build up without having to worry about it stacking up high because that's a limitation of one of these frame mounted plows. You can really only raise them up off the ground within the capabilities and the limitations of the quick hitch. And so that cylinder is gonna end up giving you maybe eight to 10 inches of height underneath there, which isn't a whole lot. So you definitely have to think ahead on where you're gonna push that snow with a snow plow. One of the other downsides of a snow plow is the fact that you're gonna have windrows. And if you saw a video recently when I used one of these plows on my X739 at home, I did a pretty good job there. Of, of avoiding the windrows, but I had to do so by sacrificing plow width. And so my, my plow edge there, uh, the line of snow, was somewhere in this vicinity here instead of taking a full swath of snow. So you're limiting or reducing the, the effective uh, width of your plow if you're trying to avoid those windrows. But if you do end up with windrows, you're going to have to go back and clean those up. And that's just inefficient, taking more time, fuel, and everything else. The last con to a snow plow really applies to both the snow plow and the snow blower. And we're talking about having to mount it to the front frame of your compact tractor or subcompact tractor. That means you need to remove the loader, the bucket on there, and it's really not a quick transition to go from loader to plow to plow to loader. So there's no quick interchange there. And that's one of the big downsides to having a frame mounted attachment, whether it's a plow or a blower. So a few pros about snow blowers, they're fast and efficient. Okay, they're great in deep snows, and you don't have to worry about where you're going to leave a pile of snow or where you're going to find room for that, okay? One of the things that's great about them is you don't need to worry about finding a place to pile your snow. It's going to take that snow and eject it and just place it all over the side of your yard, wherever you want to do it. And so most of these are going to have a hydraulic chute on there to allow you to go back and forth very quickly and get it over here, get it over there, but you're not going to worry about 
finding a place to put a big pile of snow like you would with a snow plow. So one of the other things about them that are a great benefit is the fact that they're very fast and efficient with those large, heavy snows. And so if you have 6, 8, 10, 12 inches of snow, you're able to cut through that really quickly and take care of it without having to worry about windrows to go back and clean up. So similar to the snow plow, one of the big downsides is the fact that you need to mount it on the front frame of your tractor. Not a big deal in and of itself, but the fact that you bought a subcompact or a compact tractor to be able to use that, that loader, that front end loader, different projects throughout the year. And so some of you have to sacrifice that capability in the winter time to leave your snow blower on. It's not a quick project to go from the snow blower to the loader or vice versa. One of the other downsides is of course the cost. As we talked about earlier, snow plows are quite cheap in comparison to a snow blower. You know, retail price on a new blower like this, a 54 inch setup for a 1025 for instance, is gonna be 42 to $4,400. You know, a snow plow here is going to be in that $1,500 to $1,700 range. So significantly cheaper, significantly more money, and a lot bigger investment. You really need to have a lot of snow to be able to justify a snow blower like this. So another downside to the snow blower is the fact that they're really good for those deep snows, as we were talking about, but they're not so good for the, the snows when you get two or three inches, kind of like what we had here. And you really almost are treating it like a, a plow or a pusher because you're, you're trying to pile it up in a deep enough area where then you can blow it out, okay? And uh, that's not really what they're designed to do. They're not designed to, to kind of be used like a plow or a pusher. They're designed to blow that snow out, eject it and put it all over the yard. So if you're in an area that you happen to get lots of really deep, heavy snows, you know, this is definitely an effective solution for that. But if you get a lot of small snows, like we do here, even in the snow belt in, in Michigan here in West Michigan, you know, where we get two, three inches of snow like we did right now, but then we can also get those deep snows, maybe not the most versatile tool for you. So the last con to a snow blower is going to be all of the moving parts. And so everything from the, the auger on the inside to the PTO shaft, that's going to be the long shaft with the U-joints and knuckles, you know, on either end, uh, going all the way back to your mid PTO, you know, even your quick hitch. Again, you're going to have the cylinder for the raising and lowering action of it with the hoses and that kind of thing on there as well. You know, you have your hydraulic chute rotation and you have your your short stubby PTO shaft as well. These are all, that's a lot of moving parts to have, okay? So it's just increasing that likelihood that something's gonna wear out or break in an untimely fashion. And uh, it's just something to be aware of. And yeah, that goes, I guess, kind of hand in hand with it being a more expensive tool. It, it generally would be more complex, right? And so that's just part of it there with the gearbox and everything else in there. So you have what, three different shear pins, I believe it is on the, uh, the auger up here. You know, and of course you do have your replaceable skid shoes and your replaceable cutting bar as well. But just another con, and uh, I say that not in a negative way, but just in a way to be aware of because it's potentially more maintenance, more cost, more upkeep. Well, I hope this helped comparing a snow plow versus a snow blower, okay? This isn't really including the bucket or a pusher or any of the other attachments. You know, this is just kind of lining up two of the popular snow removal attachments that you see offered by John Deere uh, for the front of the tractor, okay? And so your snow plows are typically gonna be 54 inches, although there are, uh, there is a 60 inch variant that's out there. Don't see many of those. Now, if you have checked out my other videos, you might've seen I added on those Superior Tech uh, wing extensions. I know that Superior Tech makes them. Um, I've seen a couple others out there on eBay as well, but you can check my links and, and I post links to those as well if you have trouble finding them. You know, with the snow blowers, you're gonna have two variants there as well for the one series and two series. You're gonna have the, uh, the 47 and 54 inch. And then with the three series, you're gonna have the 59 inch snow blower. Well, and actually you can get the 59 inch snow blower, I believe with the, the new 2032s and 2038s as well. So it gets kind of confusing, but there's some options out there for you either way. I really appreciate you watching. I wanna say thank you for that. Thank you to my son, Owen, for videoing. If you wouldn't mind, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, check out my other videos, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.